Last spring, during the height of the first wave of the pandemic, I went jogging to find some peace. I was lamenting aloud to God, as only an extrovert can do. Lamenting about the isolation of the lockdown. Lamenting about all the events and activities that I was looking so forward to that were canceled. Lamenting about my friends, sisters, and co-workers who were sick and suffering with the virus. Lamenting about hospitals overflowing and healthcare workers without protection. Lamenting about the anxiety I felt about the financial health of Renew and my staff. My lamenting went on and on. Suddenly, I was caught short, awakened by a series of messages written in different colored chalk on the sidewalk before me. I stopped and began reading them. The one that touched me at that moment was hope will not be canceled. My prayer began to shift. Out of the depth of lament came hope. As I jogged the rest of the way home, I thanked God for that personal message of hope. And once again, very consciously, entrusted my life into the arms of my loving God. In the bo both the first reading from Isaiah and the psalm response, we hear a communal lament from the people of Israel. Lamentation is a prayer of faithful people during a period of suffering and distress. If you think about it, to whom shall we go but God during times of uncertainty, anxiety, times that seemingly are without hope? A lamenting prayer is both holy and healthy, and the Israelites did a good job at lamenting. It was part of both their personal and public prayer. It came out of their deep and personal relationship with their God. In this reading from Isaiah, they lamented their deep suffering as a people. That particular time of history, in that context, they were overburdened and severely oppressed. They were feeling abandoned by their ancestors and their God. They even blame God for allowing them to stray. Their prayer gradually shifted from lamentation to a renewed belief in the power of God at work in their lives. They were awakened to the hope that the God who worked wonders in their past would manifest mercy in a new way in their present suffering. In the second reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, Paul awakens the people of Corinth to the truth that God had blessed them with so many gifts and would once again provide them with all they needed as a community, as a people, to face their present hardships and any hardship or difficulties that would come in the future. Paul assured them that they had all they needed live faithfully until the Lord's coming. This is a powerful message for us. God gives each of us the talents and strengths and inner resources we need to face our current situation with courage and grace and will continue to give us what we need as we move into the future and face other difficult times. We have all we need. The short parable in today's gospel from Mark tells us three times to be watchful. This is sometimes translated, be awake, be woke to the God of hope who comes in the midst of our tribulations. So we lament, lamenting the surging virus, lamenting a divided country and a sinful and suffering church, lamenting racial injustice, lamenting violent outbreaks, lamenting our wounded earth, lamenting 545 children and counting who have been separated from their families.
We lament with our eyes wide open as we enter into this Advent time, asking the God of hope to awaken us to the comings of God into our very lives and into our suffering world. The Indian poet Tagore gives us a focus for our Advent prayer in his poem, Silent Steps. He writes, Have you not heard his silent steps? He comes, comes, ever comes, every moment and every age, every day and every night. During this Advent time, in the year of Corona time, we are awakened to the truth that God so loved the world that he sent his son Jesus to be born among us, that he sent his son Jesus into the world to become one of us, to save us and set us free. Our God will come again on the day of the Lord, a future time when the reign of God, a reign of justice and peace, will be fully established on the earth. And because our God comes and continues to come every day and every night, hope will never be canceled.